Welcome to the committee, uh, the budget committee, right on the council. Uh, we're not expecting any fire alarms, so do get an alarm if it's for real. Please leave the way you came in to your left and behind. For those of you at this end of the room, to my right. Before starting this evening's meeting, we've received word of the death of Honorary Alderman uh, Alan Jenkins. Um, I'd be grateful if those who can to stand and we will mark his death with one minute silence. Very much. Please take a seat. Councillor Jenkins was a long standing right on the two councillor and the chairman of the planning committee. Uh, the um, purpose of the meeting for the licensing committee is to review the council statement, principles for gambling. The council is required to prepare and publish a statement of principles for gambling at least every three years, having regard to guidance issued by the Gambling Commission. I hand over now to Mark Eaton, who will run briefly through the report and answer any questions if required. Thank you. Um, the review has resulted in no material changes of the sub table notification uh, statistics to ensure they remain current. These changes are highlighted in yellow to ground on Appendix A. Uh, we did receive two responses to the consultation, which took place between the 1st of December and the 22nd of December, both which make no comments, but mean the police who comment uh, recommended the licensing authority in producing a clear and thorough document. Subject to approval by the licensing committee and adoption from council, it is proposed that the revised statement of funds principle will take effect for 24 of March this year. Um, I don't have to take any questions. Looks like negative. Any more for more? In which case, I will move it directly from the chair that we pass a recommendation as report. Well, absent. Absent. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Or can I pass it through general information? We have to do so. It is carried by general information. Uh, before moving, uh, finishing the meeting, I would uh, refer members to. Uh, section 5.3, which Pat Mark already pointed out, uh, that um, the only comment was really to commend the report and the legal art licensing department. This is possibly the last time the Rival District Council Licensing Committee meets, and I therefore wish to pass my own personal and on behalf of the my thanks to the Mark and your department for their sterling work, and I think we pass on uh, the licensing work to the new authority for your work. The meeting of the licensing committee is ended. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. I'll now proceed with this meeting of Rydell District Council's Planning Committee. I trust you have all remembered the emergency evacuation procedure, so I won't do it again. Um, do we have any apologies for absence? I've got Councillor Goodwick already. Yes, that the one we don't? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Councillor Hope. Right, thank you. Uh, now then, declarations of interest. Uh, I will start off. And I have an interest. I've been lobbied on item eight. Uh, personal non-pecuniary, uh, not prejudicial. Yes, Councillor. Uh, item eight, um, fifteen. I've been lobbied, first of all, not traditional, not pecuniary. Thank you, Councillor Wickers. Thank you, Chairman. Eight on 19, I've been lobbied, first of all, not traditional, not prejudicial, not pecuniary. Councillor McKenzie. Lobbied on item eight. Councillor Andrews. Lobbied on item eight. Uh, that's uh, that's a lot. Right. Uh, just to announce that I've decided that we'll have a little move around in the order of the items so that we take item eight first, uh, so that the other people who have a somewhat wasted journey last time won't have to hang around quite a lot this time. So we'll take that one first and then move back to item seven. Minutes of the last meeting. I will move those minutes as a correct record. Uh, do I have a second then? Yes, Councillor Cleary, thank you. Got any problems with that, or can I take that as a general affirmation? Yes, I'm seeing a so that urgent business, uh, I have no urgent business. I'm not seeing anybody else shouting off. So we move on to item six, the schedule of items determined by committee, pages 10 to 12. And from that, we will move to item eight. Uh, just to point out that Councillor Mason has retired from the floor with an interest in this one. All right. Members will be very aware uh, that this application is to go to the October meeting uh, at the request of members. Uh, this was in order for the development of the applicant to provide further information on chain ownership product uh, and further information in relation to people and drop production. And also for the development to consider a reduction of the overall problems of the current. The application was deferred again in December of the request of officers to allow the consideration of further letters to be from the parish council. So the agenda report updates early reports to members and includes revisions to the scheme and further responses that have been received. Um, unfortunately, uh, Chairman, there are a number of plans that were appended to that report that are for later revision. The developers responded to a number of the issues raised by members at the October meeting, and the scheme has been amended to include an additional single story dwelling and a cycle path to run the length of the scheme from the entrance block uh, at the entrance to Meadowfield. The scheme will also be amended to uh, increase the use of art still to occupy the centre of the installation of chimney and stock. In reconsidering the issue of the proposed number of units at the site, the developer has confirmed that they believe the scheme has proposed some efficient use of land and as such has not changed the scheme of use of the number of units proposed. It's understood that the developer has met with the parish council since the item was first deferred, and whilst not looking to reduce numbers, which is something which I think members of the parish council have thought, uh, the developer has amended the retained units. 
and that's your sequence of red divine in this part of the reproduction of the uh, red tissues. So the tessier mix would be now effectively 50 50 50 percent more red and 50 percent intermediate global ship. So these genes are outlined in the report uh, and some of the report also speaks to the small properties of the issue. In update to the report in response to local concerns about the ability of local people to buy gold outright at the site, the African and the Black Minister Council to request a waiver of restrictions that apply to share the budget housing in a designated protected rural area. And so that it was now made this request to gold being that it will make this decision on this matter. The important thing is that the decision to, 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 to waiver DPA. Restrictions in their threatened with both things. It's not one of the local authorities, it's not going to the land and tax determination, determination of this application. Uh, we, we, we are going to need to determine an application for uh, it to be forced. Just run through some of the pictures. Um, again, some of these concerns will be familiar with. Um, because we have had a site visit in 2000, uh, and we also feel that we've been restricted before, but we'll just run through this a bit briefly here if that's all right. Um, so the red outline um, is um, the site uh, to the west of the Mumbai, uh, allocated housing site. Uh, this is uh, probably an area that you will know with the crossroads at the Mumbai. Uh, so the site is effectively. Um, over the bank to the right. Picture taken of the third slope, and it's just the ABC outline of the telegraph pole, like, which is sort of the, uh, not far off where the uh, the uh, exits to the site would be. And that's just looking back down in a silly direction um, towards the crossroads. You see the red marker on, on, on the table there, which is just marks the um, the the sort of most part of the um, the the act there. Just move on to the next one. So this picture is taken for, from the public right of way which crosses the site and it's taken just at the sort of the junction of the, the boundary of the site uh, with the 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 not far from the road that the the B twelve fifty seven is just behind it. Looking across the sort of northeastern direction, right across the site, and you can see the outline of the public right of way which crosses the site. Then, um, you know from the, the plans that the, the housing, um, that the justice layout forms mainly four main blocks. Um, at the northern end of the site will be the kids uh, block facility and some uh, children's play space. Uh, the eastern sort of structure of the site means the east bank. Like, um, is, is, um, is, is open space, and also there's a section of open space which runs parallel with the, the, the street club, which is seven, which is so um, behind me that you shot that. So that will be right away, will be diverted um, as part of the scheme. Um, it will enter the site and leave the site in the same place, uh, but effectively runs parallel with the first uh, stretch of housing, and then will run up through the uh, open space to piece of um, and connected to the little snippet that, that um, leads down into the room of uh, the south of Cherry Tree Hill. You can just see some stairs in that picture, uh, stairs where they just where this group of the chaps are walking that just marks the sort of the, the front of the first line of housing. Just move on to the next slide, please. Uh, this is just looking uh, directly from um, the spot where the last picture was taken, um, with the hedge road to, to the right there on the parallel with the, um, with the with the main road. So that section that um, there will be um, the uh, section of open space, uh, the road and then where the stakes are the first line of housing. Uh, beyond that hedge there will be small bones and acoustic fencing but uh, it will be hard to keep that area. The next slide. Uh, this is pictures taken from the other side of the uh, the other end of the public right of way, um, just um, 
a bit about it to start to be And that's just the paper that was all on the carpet site. So we own those trees and sort of the, 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 the primary school. Uh, so just in, in the immediate foreground, there will be uh, some housing that's where the, 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 the bungalows will be uh, sited. And then over where towards where the sheep are, uh, that's the, the an area that's above look to a display space in that area um, and then in between um, is the box station. The next picture just starts to pan around um, on the next one. Just keep going and just pans around the side of the direction. I think you get an indication there from, from, um, from that picture of the, the land level and how the land falls generally from the silver. Um, and it's south to northerly direction. The picture's taken from um, uh, the track uh, that runs uh, from the site to Meadowfields. And Meadowfields just uh, um, street in front of, uh, of the primary school. Uh, as part of the scheme that's proposed, that will be pedestrian and bike the link to Meadowfields using that, that track. Um, if we go to next slide, this picture is taken from uh, the little public right way that is um, to the north of the site, and that's taken from um, the north uh, westerly uh, direction across the site. It is this section of the field that you can see from the uh, field if you're around it. Yeah, we're going to look at we um, looking to the school playing field to just about the site of the distance to that education. Um, this is just a, 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 a shot um, of, um, from the crossroads leading down into um, a, a monthly, just to give you an indication of, the, of how the land does drop. Um, job is intending to, to, to use the land level, so as part of the team. The table forms um, will, will be used to ensure that the development sort of sits into the land. The next few slides, um, just a couple of slides, will just um, try to give a flavour of the type of, of the variety of building plans uh, and ages of building that are on the lease of this and the challenges that um, are on the main page on page seven. And the next thing we have slide we're taken um, to um, just to give a flavour of the school traffic in the afternoons so because that does a short slight visit. Uh, we we went to the site very early in the morning just to witness the school drop off traffic in the morning. So these are a series of pictures which members may recall that were taken in the afternoon at school big at the times. Um, I'm going to run through them very quickly. Um, I think what I'll just say to members is there's two things to look at. Or well, one is the variety of building styles in uh, in a rugby. Uh, clearly design uh, has been an issue that's related to the objection. The other is the, the school related traffic. So that picture, that first picture was taken around about 20 past two in the afternoon, and the picture is the one to when the school traffic clears. Um, about 10 or 15 minutes after the school finishes. So, again, we think just run through the next. Whether this site is one of our outreach housing sites, 
uh, the principle of using the site for housing and growing the relation association and within the extensive policy established by the development plan. We need our office to have the site to grow the housing, like you said, further, um, and it's the role of, of the development plan. The type of housing built, affordable housing, is what she needed in my day, which is in the auction, and I'm not confused, we very heavily in favour of both of an energy efficient build, uh, electrification, uh, and build standards that meet and so few exceed the natural space standards, um, but further significantly affect it to what you see. The proposed kitchen drop facility is a benefit of the proposal. It's been included to ensure that it's part of the, uh, the development of the village um, can help address problems experienced in the village with school related traffic. It isn't a facility or a location which is designed to remove all school traffic from the village, um, but it is designed to help diverge all from the school traffic that is currently experienced in the village. What I would say, um, I think it's probably likely to be more effective in the morning than the afternoon, just because of the way in which parents have to uh, drop pick up children. Um, but I would say that a lot of the traffic that's experienced as a result of the school is a result of um, children from elsewhere attending the school. I think in time, it's probably fair to say with a site like this, um, we'll see more local children. Um, Taking place in fact, the school and that in itself should see a decrease in school related traffic in the village. Here, the child proposed balance the need to deliver much needed housing and an efficient use of land with the need to provide an acceptable standard of residential energy, open space, and landscaping. Appropriate landscaping and lighting will be conditioned to mitigate the visual impact of the development within the wider landscape, and there are no technical matters to see hybrid design, noise mitigation, or drainage. That can't be overcome at some point. General, all of the issues are considered in the report and the recommendation is on conditional approval, but it will be subject to um, completion of section 106 agreement. Um, what I would say is it's minded that the members are minded to approve the application. Um, we would just need to review all of the conditions and, and just check that there may be some minor amendments um, um, if you're happy, but that, that is delegated to me. Um, just in, in addition to that and in relation to conditions, um, there are full drainage details that have a, a been uh, submitted, which they, uh, they have confirmed to be acceptable. Um, what we would like to try and do is get your force confirmation that they are happy with the, the details, they were happy with the, the drainage strategy, uh, the details basically reflect what they wanted you know, in the event. Uh, just to be able to condition the details um, and go with me for the, the condition of discharge and conversations to in the future. Um, thank you, Chair, for the, the recommendations. All right, thank you, John. All right, first of all, do we have any questions for the officers? Yes, Councillor. Yes, Chair. Um, can, can I ask what the portion? Of the of the, 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 the 78 houses bears to the um, village of the moment is what's the percentage and how uh, what, what's the percentage and percentage of the percentage that we need to the It is in the report, Councillor Andrews. I think it was derived from um, some representations we received. I'll just find it for you. I think it's something like a 47 or 48 percent increase in the number of homes that we have been I think that's what we've reported to you. Yeah, I can't remember everything in that, so we've got a chair. Is that 47% of the people just want to accept the step of the step? I've never been. I haven't found it because it's page 83 of the report. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Um, but I don't want to find that. Thank you, Jeff. Any more for any more? Yes, Councillor Patrick. The, I think the wording was, if it's fair to say that, it is from that the school uh, will potentially have more local uh, children than children from elsewhere. Um, I have not 
which I think would, would be that you'll have more children coming from elsewhere and more children coming from the other bigger skill and more traveling. Is there any facts and figures in the country? I understand that local children are not allowed to. They're the way they are amongst the other way. If we were going to be a local school, that would be a good school. Right, are we looking for questions? Please, oh, well, council members. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Can I just, I think this question's been asked before, but just for clarity, if the application is approved, but so there's going to be 58 dwellings in the service village, according, um, which is about double what service village should take according to the local plan. Would this be taken into consideration in the next local plan, which would be the new North Yorkshire Council? As in, would it look on like about double from the dead? I think in comparing any plan to the new development plan, part of that exercise is looking at um, how things have expanded, what we can develop to think about, and what exercise positions they may be in, in a place. And it would be, um, it, it would be factored into, into, into consideration. It would be a bit would be a consideration. I can't say that it would necessarily but an involvement in future development. That, that, that depends on whatever strategy is being formed, but it certainly is in which is in it. Any more for anyone? No. Right. Uh, four speakers on this item, the first being Councillor Mason as the one councillor. I think on the routine, you have three minutes. Yes. Um, prior to the previous meeting, I, I sought to represent the local communities of Ward Member and uh, reached out to Yorkshire Housing to, to try and push the reduction of the houses on the site and the inclusion of uh, more available market houses with direct purchase. As a Ward Member, I actually believe in flatting within the region of local impacts to do that and represent the community. Unfortunately, the monitoring officer here and subsequently at North Yorkshire County Council has deemed that I may have predetermined myself and have blocked me from voting and taking part in the debate. I don't agree, by the way, but I think to fight that would have just dragged out as long as possible. And I believe that monitoring officer was due to be lie down tonight. So, but anyway, I have a few questions. Um, so I've been digging into the NPPF about this, I've been smarted as well. Um, the NPPF states that where a need for affordable housing identified, planning policy should specify the type of affordable housing required and accept, expect it to be met on site unless the agreed approach contributes to the objective of creating mixed and balanced communities. Does this create a mixed and balanced community? That's a question I have to ask. The MPPF also states that local planning authorities should consider whether allowing some market housing on these sites and would help facilitate and would this help facilitate affordable housing developments. And local planning authorities should support the development of entry level exception sites suitable for first time buyers or those looking to rent their first homes. Great. It then goes on to say these sites should not should be on land which is not already allocated for housing. And should be adjacent to and should be adjacent to existing assessments proportionate in size to them. Now, my question is just on that. I believe that if it is an entry level exception site, they should not be any larger than one hectare in size, or exceed five percent of the size of the existing settlement. Now, should this be deemed as an entry level exception site? Does this application fit that criteria? If not, why not? And more importantly, is this development proportionate to the size of the village? It is a substantial increase. Our own policy SP4, whilst not describing not prescribing a detailed mix of individual sites, does aim for the provision of appropriate mix and choice of new housing central to the objective of creating sustainable and balanced communities. 
the site will not contribute to increasing the housing choice for those who wish to purchase directly on the open market in the parish, particularly those wanting to be on site. The lack of market housing is a major limitation to the scheme, to, to the scheme and should have been addressed. Now, I understand now there's applications to try and address that. The addictive yield. <laughs> we find out that the yield is not an absolute figure. You know, as it's probably assumed by most residents in right now, that the figure you, you'd expect that to be pretty much what you expect on the site. You know, it's an indicator. But it's an indicator, I'm sure the community would, would like to think that the threshold would not constitute a near 50% increase in the size from 40 to 58. Do you agree? I'm talking to you. Yes, uh, that's a lot of interest. Yep, sorry. Community engagement. Sure, from my own experience, there was some community engagement, but I don't think that concerns were considered. Kiss and drop. The kiss and drop is a concern of mine because it's already been alluded to here by, by the officers that it's not going to meet the needs of the village in pickup. Now, we've seen pictures there, which I think were reasonably quiet for the day. Of the pickup in the afternoon in London. And I must say that I don't understand how this is going to work with this, this kiss and drop as it says in the title. Finally, solid share. I do celebrate the ambition of the climate change commitment to this housing. It will help our addition, uh, reduce our emissions and save residents money. I do call on all developers and consultants who are planning out ventures to take heed because I'm pretty sure it's going to change soon. Uh, for me, the gut feeling in this case is this application would have been accepted in open arms if the consultants had listened to the community from the start. And having come from a social background, social housing background, I do have to agree there's no justification for some of the stigma that's attached to the social housing development. But I appeal and I appeal to the community to embrace the development if it's approved. But as I'm now unable to vote, I'll leave this to my colleagues. Actually, in way over time, I've got one more sentence. Yeah. There is a lead, there is a on reflection, I'll tell you that I'll cut that out. On reflection, I would have recommended refusal on this application and asked the developer to go back to enjoy it. Point to there are regime officers would like to see you more. Yeah, I think just the next, I think we try to support um outline the position uh, in, in the report. Um we do have a policy of the international policy to try and put a, a, a mix of housing to ensure balance between uses. Our policy is specific that that should be on every site. Um I think what the what report says that it took this site and what was built on this site in terms of the mix of affordable housing tenure um that Asset sector, which is predominantly um, fully occupied housing, um, does actually help contribute to 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 to, to a mix and balance of needs in 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 this location. Uh, I think the report notes that something like six affordable homes in Rugby at the minute, and I don't understand it. That 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 figure is not even even further uh, to about three that that it currently stands. Um, just in terms of um, rural exception sites, that's a different policy metric. Uh, a rural exception site is a site that comes forward outside the top plan. So, in other words, it's had with the policy in the plan. Um, this, is, I think this is different. This is an allocated housing site. It the purpose is to deliver housing. Um, it's not a percent uh, rural exception fee that's outside development uh, and and uh, it has been effectively given that national policy uh, and local policy uh, sort of, uh, yeah, for positive to be in. Um, just in terms of the. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt, but is it, is it normal that officers respond to each speaker? I'm just being it, just respond to it. Yeah, but I did notice that people were taking it, uh, looking very strangely at the speaker. Because he took longer than three minutes. It's not long since this council sat and listened to an applicant from the floor addressing, personally addressing this this council. The chair has asked me to respond to the yeah, well, which is what I'm doing. doing. Just on the final point, um, Chair, um, in terms of the, um, the interview, um, 
states on the ticket in the field of 40 charities over standing guidance on charity density. Finally, this site was always too big for the village and should never have been navigated. Hope that lessons from this will be learned following the concentrating development in a few villages, allocating sites in a tick, tick box fashion will be taken on board in the coming year to plan the view with regard to the distribution of development of the science and Thank you. Right, thank you. The next speaker we have is the, somebody speaking for the objectors and the Boston Tendency. Got three minutes, and I'll give you an audible warning as it descends. We feel that we have to reiterate our previous comments as a community that were made on the 25th of October as these are important issues that have not been dealt with by the developers in their resubmitted plans. <coughs> the size of the development exceeds the amount of houses that the local plan recommends for a mother being as a service village and would increase the house amount of households by 48% in one development. No other village has had this percentage increase imposed upon them. Planning officer concludes to be in favour of the development as it will quote, address the imbalance which exists across the district. Unquote. The district is a vast area, and to locate all required housing in one development is not the correct answer. The required social stroke affordable housing should be split across the whole district. The lack of duty and care of the planning officer to just tick boxes rather than work at a valid solution across all service villages is apparent. Yorkshire Housing should have consulted with local developers to offer part of the site as social stroke affordable housing and the other part as freehold market housing, which would have benefited the village for downsizing, upsizing, or becoming first time buyers of freehold properties. There will be no sustainable drainage on the site, and this development will require a tank and pumping station. The existing right, public right of way should be retained for its heritage from its original path and should not be moved because it is an inconvenience to the developers. There was a proposed development submitted to yourselves in November, 19, uh, November 2022 by Carbon Homes, a Swinton village of 19 houses. As you have always classed <coughs> a mother being Swinton together as representing one service village, this will in total represent 77 new social stroke affordable houses being developed. Where is this need locally for this amount of social stroke affordable housing? You, the planning authority, effectively gave the development principles in policy FP10 of the Rydell local plan to the community as the basis upon which the site under consideration shall be developed. Many of those principles have not been met, and as a result, the proposal is not compliant with the development plan and should be refused. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have the agent for Buffalo. Evening, members. Um, I'm going to focus on providing our response to the last raise of the October committee meeting tonight. Um, we submitted a frequently asked questions note, which makes clear how the eligibility criteria for the home are not overly restricted. And how local people have an opportunity to secure these proposed homes. The FAQ note also outlines how the council can apply for a waiver, which will mean that people who secure a shared ownership home at the site will have the opportunity in the future to purchase a 100% free home, meaning they would then have owned the property outright and have the ability to sell that on the open market. The development will therefore truly deliver a route of affordable home ownership for local people. Upon a further meeting with the parish council, we increase the opportunity for home ownership within the development by providing six more rent to buy properties, offering even greater potential for local people to own a home in the village. A third bungalow has been added to meet the 5% policy requirement. The school has submitted a letter confirming that the proposed kiss and drop facility has been sized to specifically meet their needs, that the school will take ownership of it, and the school will maintain it in perpetuity. The cycle pedestrian route through the site to Middle Field has been widened to three metres. The only area we have not been able to make changes is a reduction in the number of homes. Justification has been provided on a number of occasions to demonstrate that the number of homes at the site is policy compliant. It's driven by housing mix. 
to ensure the scheme directly meets the district's identified housing needs. The development contains more homes than indicated in the local plan because the housing mix contains two and three bedroom and semi detached properties, which take up the same footprint as a large attached house. Delivering less homes at the site and larger detached homes would actually make the scheme less policy compliant as the density would become too low, meaning the land wouldn't be used efficiently, and as the housing mix wouldn't align with the council's schmar, which is why we simply can't make this change. It's really important to remember. That there is no adverse impact associated with the number of homes proposed at the site. This has been confirmed by technical consultees who have not objected to the development. Furthermore, the development will deliver a number of benefits beyond existing policy requirements. Homes will be delivered to an eco design standard which vastly exceeds building regulations. The homes will be delivered to an eco design the side of the proposed homes will also exceed the nationally described space standards. All in all, the development will make an invaluable contribution towards delivering affordable homes for local people in the village and district. It will provide local people with a genuine choice and mix of house types and tenures. It will deliver new homes that are truly affordable now and which provide a route to 100% home ownership in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Popwell. Great. We will go into the debate. As the uh, local man who is sitting over there at the back, yes, Councillor Adams. Yeah, yes, Chair. Um, I got the telephone, so I have a new telephone to this episode. What else? Um, um, you, you're, 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 you're all aware how keen I am to see that there should be, um, uh, so they should, they should be a lot more. Um, houses built uh, adjacent to villages in the countryside. Um, so uh, nobody thinks that I'm uh, literally against this simply because there's a lot of houses in the countryside that look like that. Um, it, this, this site is, um, is an allocated site, and um, whether it was should or should not have been allocated is not for us, it's allocated to the capital set that. Um, it's um, it, it, it does have um, social housing, and um, there are arguments two ways in regard, in, in regard to social housing, and I won't and I won't, I won't pursue that point. Um, but what we did when we set, when we set up such um, um, service villages, we did say there would be ten service villages and only basically thirty houses a village service village. What we have. And it's 58. Uh, 40, um, but when, it, when the site was allocated, it was agreed there should be 40. Um, and I think most people, I think the, the uh, residents are, would be content um, with, with 40. Um, the, the question is the, the question then is whether or not we think um, that um, the additional, the, the 18 additional houses um, makes the site. Um, too, too much for the um, to the village. I, I think I can accept and agree with them that to have um, 47% 47 percent additions to the size of the village to me seems to be excessive. Um, I've looked at policy SB20 chair and um, I've seen the various phrases that says new development will respect the character and content of the immediate locality. Um, the, uh, the council and short developments are visually attractive as a result of good architecture. They are appropriate, appropriate, appropriate and effective landscaping. We are sympathetic to the local character and history, including the surrounding built environment. I look at um, the uh, photographs of the, um, of the uh, of the proposed visuals of the um, site on page 127. And what I see is something um, that looks like um, the likely developments that um, Brown applies in Bolton. It belongs to a, a, a it has an urban feel about it. Um, it doesn't um, it, it doesn't fit the style of the, of the village at all. Um, and um, as the officers say one of the characteristics of this village is the variety. 
the house of that lineage. So this is this is this is a theory. Uh, it's a it's a plot. All, all the same of urban looking houses are very similar to what you'd expect um, on the outskirts of its of a town. Um, all things considered, chair, I, I, I don't think this um, I don't think it's prepared, this proposal complies with policy at all. Um, I, I think that it's, um, it's, it's, it's far too big. Uh, it's not, uh, yes, we want to service villages, but we didn't want service villages clean and dated in a display. Um, and I don't think the proposal, um, as I look at it, so I look at those proposed visuals on page 127, I'm sorry in character uh, with that village at all. Um, and um, so therefore, Chair, I'll propose the views on Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Councillor Bakery. Well, I've heard to be written down now. This is what I think of it. This is the locally unwanted overdevelopment of the Bumabu village and highlights and serves as a warning to other village communities of the effect and potentially destructive impact of the Villa plan, which is wrong. The designation of service villages as contact of the Rydell plan is used by this council to force justify showing silly numbers of houses and serve villages. And at the same time, and we prove this through our local plan working party, starving the rest of Rydell's small villages of new life and new blood. In other words, let's kill off the small villages and let's wrap as much housing into the likes of Slingsby, Hoggingham, will be well done to satisfy Castle Howard, will be Carrington to satisfy Castle Howard, and um, let everywhere else just go to go to rot, go to hell. We're controlled by the opposite of this council. This council is not run by members for the people. It's run by the will of the officers. That's one point. Yeah, I could go on. I've not got any time or patience with the right of plan. I suspect that I, for once in my life, find myself in the majority. Anyway, concurring with Councillor Andrews and, and um, coming to a very swift conclusion, I have nothing against um, developing some houses on that side, but over developing, over developing and, and running nearly 50% of extra houses in Chicago is tantamount to criminal, in my opinion. This is Ride Elder Street Council at its worst, at its height. Just before we go over the cliff, it's like a bunch of lemmings and it all gets worse. So I would urge everybody uh, here tonight to um, respond to the consultation on the right of plan to make sure that insidious and destructive uh, control aspects are eradicated. We have a big struggle. Yeah, this is uh, Rydell working against the people, not for them. Second, Councillor Andrews' um, proposal to refuse this application and that it be thrown out on the basis that it's too big, too much in the wrong place, to come back with an uh, outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Councillor Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, I cannot support the motion. Um, we don't live in an ideal world. We live in a world of the necessary. I'd love it if we didn't have to build new houses anywhere. I'd love it if we didn't have to build on grass fields. I quite agree that going forward, I quite agree that going forward, we should be building in the smaller villages, giving them new oxygen, new development. I'm just, I'm just contradicting by saying I don't want to see building, but if we have to have building, I, I look forward in future to see it in villages. This, unfortunately, you know, it is a big development compared to another big. It's a more facing site. 
We live we don't live in an ideal world. In an ideal world, we wouldn't be building that. Don't live in that world. It does support fundamentally the policies that we have to deal with at the moment. I cannot support the motion to refute. Anybody else? Yes, Catherine. Thank you, Chair. Um, I live in a service village which has doubled in size, but doubled in size over 25, 30 years. Not in one go like this. Um, I am torn on this one. I mean, if, if the site was to be built in two phases, maybe I could support it, but I'm not sure I can at the moment. I think it is too much in one go. Thank you. Right. Any more? No. no. Right. No. No. I've got uh, a few things to say. It's clearly going to be a difficult and very balanced decision. And when it's like that, I like to list out the negatives and the positives. So I shall do so. I'll start with the negatives. 58 dwellings specifically for people of limited means, although I don't know that that's really applicable and the limited means, because that means anyone earning less than about these pounds. So yes, it's affordable housing. How will those people unable to afford a car travel to work, to shops, without as a minimum, say, cycle to route into Malton? That would also provide a safe cycle route to a monthly school and to reduce the twice daily chaos school run time. During our site visit, the school traffic congestion was appalling. No wonder parents insist on driving their children to school due to the traffic dangers. Although it's somewhat ironic that most dangers are almost all created by themselves driving their children to school. We need safe active travel routes and school buses, but of course there's little or no funding for either or government impetus to do so. Uh, so why must infrastructure always lag behind the development? Next, a significant increase in the village size, circa 47% in one swoop. That's not organic growth by any stretch of the imagination. However, the development sites and the local plan in compliance with policy lack local and national, and we are constrained by policy. There's a near 50% increase on the indicative yield of the plan of the site of a local plan, and that is excessive. It's the usual unimaginative identity design. Uh, I was going to say there's no provision of cycle routes, but that's as requested long ago by Riding a Cycle Forum. Uh, when do we start to prioritise active, active travel instead of even for car travel? But this is at least mitigated by the three metre cycle route through the development. So, those are the negatives. <clears throat> now, on to the positives. Sustainable, energy efficient, well insulated houses with air source heat pumps, solar PV, and no gas connection. Surprisingly, way ahead of vast swathes of market housing from national house builders and also from most commercial developments. Why? The claims are for a 94% reduction in energy demand. And if that's proven to be the reality, just imagine the impact on our energy security, energy demand, therefore energy cost, if every development is built this way. Although how many of the residents will be able to afford an e-bike to buy a new car? Desperate need for social and affordable housing in the district, or more accurately, <clears throat> accurately, the whole country. This, to me, is an overwhelmingly positive way to Now, I was at the opening of a small development Affordable housing in Kirby Moorside, 
what we are looking for. There were 900 applications, nine houses. Somebody asked, is there really a need for this affordable house? 200 applications for nine houses. Same developer said they had 400 applications, one house call for affordable housing. So don't think council estate. This affordable housing is for anyone earning less than 80,000 pounds. These are our professional people. So consequently, as I have to balance the negative against the positive, I'm afraid the positives are too overwhelmingly heavily weighted. So I shall be approving this development for a lot of points opposing councillor Andrews's proposal. Right, anybody else? Yes, yes councillor Um, It's interesting a bit over what you're speaking, and I can't agree with what you said. Uh, forgive me, Mr Chairman, but councillor Patry criticised very poorly our planning department, said that we lead, that they, as a committee, we are led by the department. I don't agree with that. I don't think it's appropriate. But Councillor Simon, you shouldn't have said that. But you are. Thank you, Councillor Well, Councillor McKenna. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. I've been really told this one. I've sat and listened to all the arguments. And I've listened to the Chair Ray and the pros and the cons of it. And it's not an easy decision to make, but I know from when I'm wearing another hat that there's a real need. A real need for social housing, and the numbers that were quoted just underline that. So, I would support the application, and I would oppose Councillor Andrews. Thank you, Councillor uh, Yes, I'm just well, I'm not going to um, enter into debates, but who runs this council? That's pretty, pretty clear. Um, uh, Councillor McKenzie says uh, he would support the application on the basis of a need for social housing. I think you do yourself, and I wouldn't disagree with you. I think it's not a question of whether we support the principle of social housing. I think it's whether we wish to defend the, the uh, village of a mother vision for the development. Two things are not the same. Uh, it doesn't preclude that the people that are both the certainly desiring and wanting to contribute to their village and space to social housing. Likewise, myself. Um, you mentioned safe cycle routes. Well, as often is the case, as I was driving to Malton, I pass a lone cyclist who enters onto the B1257. And tonight, I think um, the chairman who I refer to will attest it was one continuous stream of traffic. And he was the lone cyclist on certainly on my route from Broadway to Morton. There was one other gentleman leaving Morton on a bicycle. But the bicycle takes priority for the sensible drivers, and 50 cars can just stack up behind them. There is no such thing as a safe cycle route into a mother vehicle or out of it. There's no way of trying to concoct that that, that you are. Um, uh, and we see the yeah, application. application, you have a funny application, as you rightly point out, does not provide any safe cycling route. I've been spending quite a bit of time in Cambridge recently and um, staying on a development, the new development, where the head teacher of the primary school, there is a new school on that site, was asked on Radio 4 how many of your Children arrive at school by bicycle. The answer was all of them. The mother bee, um, yeah, I'm sure the mother bee, I'm sure the residents, I can't speak for them, but would welcome half the number of houses on that site. But the current, um, you know, we, I, I don't wish to be rude, but you use the word balance repetitively. Balance. Um, the people of a mother, they are not afforded the freedom of choice. 
it's been what they've been told. You shall have this number of houses because our right ale plan, which a former chairman of the planning council clearly says, isn't perfect. It's not perfect. We don't have long as right ale district council to uh, continue with the Shiraz perfection or otherwise. And it's a shame, and it will be a shame if tonight, in in defense of this horrible right ale plan, Councillor Backley, we're talking about this application. Yeah. And if you wind up with yeah. it, we're not discussing or why no, we're not, but we're using it as as a, as a, a weapon to beat these people over the head with. We're holding it up as the holy grail. And it's, it's not. Councillor Andrews. Yes, Chair, I just want to come back on two points. Um, first of all, social housing. I'm not against social housing. I want to see so I want to see social housing. I agree with you that there, 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 there should be more of it. What I'm against is the quantity of it. The number, the number of houses in that village, um, which I, I, I like think it is excessive. Um, then I come back to your uh, your interest in the environment. Um, yes, I'm sure we will be um, interested in our environment. We've all got our um, personal interests and our Personal attractions, but I think it is wrong to allow um, those um, personal attractions to actually outweigh um, policies which we are trying to administer. And not as a, as a, if, if, if this is against policy, which I agree with, is not supposed to explain why, and explain why the context of less or less rejected. It also seems to be also. Um, this is the other the other aspects, which is only just slightly there's only going to be four houses. Um, if we're going to allow ourselves um, to um, trust our own personal interests in, 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 in a particular angle of council work, um, to let that dominate our decisions, Chair, we're going to end up um, by actually um, going against policy. And um, we are going to find that we're going to find that we're actually going to. Um, uh, take away, uh, actually damage um, our campaigns for things such as environmental improvements. I think that would be very wrong. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, yes, I'd just like to point out that uh, if this has got nothing to do with my personal beliefs, these are the, what I believe to be the most important items in planning. Um, I feel really have to point out to you, Councillor Andrews, as former chair of the committee, this is a quasi judicial process that is informed from start to finish by planning policy, national policy, the local plan, and any other local plans. That has been decided, it's been instructed by an examination in public by an inspector to be sound, legal, and compliant with national policy. And that is what primarily has to guide us. And I think you should understand that. No, I'm really Chair, the chair, that was, that was a personal comment. I did actually say to some, I didn't well, think you should allow us all um, personal feelings on certain, on certain aspects of council work to override your views on the policies. And I, I, I have not, Councillor council Patrick has just signed council policies. But in this, in this um, in what I've said tonight, I've never said a word against the right of the I've never said a word against policy. I've called, um, I've, I've referred to policy as a fancy, and I've interpreted it in a way which I think should make it quite clear that this, this application is actually against council policy, it's against the policy of that plan. Which, like Councillor Carapathy, I disagree with. All right, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Yes, I think I gave quite clear guides as to what my negatives and positives were, and uh, particularly the weighting that, as far as I'm concerned, is most important is the desperate need for social and affordable housing. Right, we have. I think completes the debate. It, it's been moved and seconded for refusal. Yes, uh, 
the formal reasons for refusal before we got to the vote, please. Well, the vote is that uh, one chair, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the number, I'm sure the officers are able to, um, to, to deal with that. Um, it's also uh, the uh, question of the design. Uh, the design, my view, is not the one of the requirements that the policy has to be done. Chairman, I, I, I would just say that if you think Chairman Miller would think, I think my thought was to reasonably think I could have it, I think I need to make it more than that. Well, Chairman, I need to understand what the reason for the that you voted for the Chairman, 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 you voted for and as I say, the, the mix, the, the, harm, the, harm is, the harm is for the look of the village. Because the village, as you've said, Jill, um, has a lot of varied developments in it. And what you're doing is you're obviously putting, if you are if you are done with what it's um, so, uh, a solid plot. Is a perfectly valid plan of decision, valid reasons. But, um, you are the officer, you know how to work these things much better than we do. And so we call upon you to do that. I think that each of us can do the reasons. So, what she said, as I say, if I thought it would be to be the answer to my memory, I don't have to be speaking to you. Okay. Um, so, I think we should make a few answers to those reasons. Uh, well, Chair, we, we, we have us have had the have had a motion. It has been seconded. Um, I, 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 I did my demand because we had demand to have a vote on it. Well, you, you proposed the refusal. According to Jill, she doesn't believe that you've got all the way valid valid criteria. Well, well, Chair, I'm sorry. I'm not asking what Councillor said. What Councillor said. What, 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 what we are being doing. We are being mandated by the officers. No, 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 no. We need, no, we need firm reasons for refusal. I didn't. Chair, I've got one thing to speak. That's clear. Uh, in, in order to move the, the meeting on, should the uh, decision go against uh, the officer's recommendation, i.e., for refusal, I wonder whether it be. An idea for the object for Councillor uh, Andrews to meet with the, the uh, head of the planning department to agree the wording of the reasons for the, uh, the reasons for refusal, which can go down at the minute, um, possibly with the order of the group as well. Do you think it goes that way? Yeah, that Eminently sensible. Thank you, Councillor Clear. We will therefore go to the vote. Make sure you're aware that the vote is for refusal, against is for the application. Yes, that is three votes for and three votes against. So that is the chairman's casting vote and the five votes against. Four against. Just to make to make that clear, we have voted for. Acceptance of that application. I'm afraid the war member wasn't allowed to vote. I'm going to say he had an opinion. He explained that for himself. I'm going to take some legal advice further legal advice on my block of voting tonight. Right, members of the public, 
would like to leave, then they're welcome to. Anybody who wants to stay is also welcome to. I think we'll have a brief adjournment for five minutes while we're waiting for this to get sorted out. <laughs> <laughs>
they're completely and utterly different. The latter, which I'm referring to, the new one, uh, appears to me to be using satellite data imagery because it pinpoints in Triton, if people have like where it was down in the street, it pinpoints in Broadway exactly, exactly, and intimately well where it comes, where, where the water comes out. Can I just ask who's not maps the other well, us on the dot dot website? Government, of course, yeah. Uh, Thank you. 
to the room to the link to the well, I just put that in the This is exactly yeah, so the people are just for a Yes. Um, if I could, uh, this we, we've been discussing the, uh, the, the consideration around the first round of the exception test. And um, the view of offices is that for seeing additional goals for putting eight lodges, uh, we've considered that it doesn't create any wider sustainable uh, sustainable to benefits community, but if members take a different view and feel that actually it could bring my benefits, then and we've got uh, the agent who is speaking on behalf of the applicant to support the application, so they may expand on this further. Then, um, what we can do is we can um, go back and we consult on the Douglas assessment that we have directly with the environment agency, and if members of Establish that the first round of the exception test is satisfied, and the environment agency are happy with the bonus assessment that has now been prepared, then officers would have the ability to 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 um, appoint the application subject to having that delegated authority. All right, thank you, Rachel. Uh, any more questions? No, no. Right. Well, I have a speaker on this item who is the agent. Okay, yes. If you'd like to go forward, you have three minutes. I'll give you a warning. Thank you, Chair, members, for the opportunity to meet today. Um, as mentioned, you considered the vote to support the application in November. Um, we submitted the application nearly four years ago now. It's a small proposal for eight additional lodges on an existing holiday park. Your office has now recommend the fusion on further squares. The outstanding consideration of the wider sustainability benefits is mentioned there. We say the application will deliver sufficient wider sustainability benefits, certainly enough to overcome the very low flood risk that the um, house pointed out there. Um, we're absolutely confident about this um, because in the three and a half years since we submitted our application, uh, countless officers approved four separate applications on a caravan park or one of the pieces where schemes were 12, 8, 6, and 4 lodges. In each of those cases, those sites were also in class of 3 and offered a little more different schemes as they were considered good for local economy and job potential and creation. Absolutely nothing different about our application. It too is a small scale expansion of existing park and floods of the creek with actual flood risks where we go um, in real terms. The caravans will be safe for their lifetime. We know increase in flooding scrubs. We please ask you to give serious consideration as to why our applications have been reduced and yet more essentially identical proposals for the pieces way to be approved most recently in November last year. Your officers have suggested in the report they've been too positive and pragmatic in task. What could possibly have changed in two months? Two negative sites and yet two polar outputs. As a planning practice, Edmonds and Associates will regularly submit applications to expand holiday parks including the clients who flood risk. This is the first occasion we've placed office resistance on wider sustainability grounds. Think about increased economic investment, additional risks and smaller spending benefits in other local businesses and retaining and creating jobs. That's all set out in the local plan. Uh, tourism is vital and valuable to right there. We agree with that. Our ecology report also proposes the creation of wildfire grassland and improved habitats for bats and birds. Seemingly, they've lost the weight of the to that the overall balance. We also have a planned uh, travel plan that we can't quite have to be it. We had clear support in November, flood risk has changed all of that. So we please ask for your committees. Doing so, you will enable our clients to expand in a small way, just like the neighboring park has done on four sets of occasions since we submitted our application. All we're asking for here is some consistency, continued positivity towards all of this as it's time to remain charged. Um, if you want some reasons to approve, um, very low risk in real terms, economic investment, stability for business, job creation, retention, positive multiplier effects for other businesses. I think that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would you like to come back on our religion? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, there have been a number of applications uh, that have been granted at uh, Brickyard Lakes 
which is the, the site of that. It's a big message to go to. Um, we have looked at those proposals and uh, in relation to a number of those applications, they were recommended to remove the input zone too. And so they uh, effectively do not need to pass the exception test, um, which this site being input zone three uh, just had to do. There was uh, an application that was in flood zone three, and that was in relation to the configuration of the existing site. So that had to be on the site, and they were proposing to put um, uh, static lodges on the site. And that was spelled, but actually, in terms of what the proposal was offering, in terms of uh, changes to the accommodation and, and reducing the number of um, uh, caravans going on and off the site, that was felt on balance to be acceptable. Um, this application has been committed to the local planning authorities for a considerable period of time. That being said, it's it's uh, in relation to why it has been with the authority. That's not been the authorities uh, making, and it's it is it has been a difficult decision uh, in relation to uh, effectively considering this application now under under materially different circumstances and considering what is a very high bar with regards to the the exception test and taking the view that uh, in terms of the also, he didn't need that high bar and he didn't bring why it's sustainable with some benefits to the community. But if that was you otherwise, then we would look at it would be a good risk assessment back to the environment agency for that consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, uh, Rachel, you're up. questioning. Right, yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, do we need to make sure the plan changes to the same space? I am looking at the just being through the plot map here. How about the other area? Old Grange actually is not getting the plus six. And, and, and so I don't understand what you're saying. Who has the right information? Because this is the Dr. website, basically, but I didn't make it seem to have to. Yeah, that was exactly the question I was asking Rachel earlier whether we needed to defer. But on the basis of the information that we've got, the fact that it still had to pass the exception test, which it didn't, then it's still, we, we should still be refusing it. Well, I don't understand. Sorry, I'm saying this. But what I don't understand is the previous, if I don't understand it. So, why is this from the fact that I just don't, maybe it's my name, it seems to be information that must be incorrectly made the best of the moment. Because we proved this. As far as I'm concerned, it is not going to come back based on the information of flooding, which is important to them. So, you know, I, I don't know which is the right. Well, the issue is that it's like it's basically all the way which we prove it, and it's a discussion around the footprint to pack them committee meeting. Yep. Uh, we went away after that meeting and checked the point of which they could have been the thing that we can certainly achieve and change in terms of the EA. I think whether it's the very 30th of that month, or the you might, um, you know, the initiative that's been confirmed by the environment agency that it's built in three. So we didn't issue a decision purchase, and that's why the application is back. Thank you. Can I just read what the double site said about the post code of the specific site? And the flood for some reason not property specific. Okay, no. Very low risk means this area has a chance to flow less than 0.1%. Uh, this service takes into account any flood principle. So, and then it says the environment is responsible for having the flood risk on the goods and sea. So, I'm assuming the environment is as much as we can do to have a testable. Then there's a map here, I can see the map here, and it clearly shows that not the grade is not. In any flood zone, yeah, they'll come to you in the form. So, uh, I would prefer to defer to buy a nice actual scary box. It's not wider than the first two just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
um, that um, are actually sort of you don't want to Rachel's um, recommendation, and uh, please just surprise me. Um, and um, uh, and so I, I, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy to go ahead uh, on the basis of this recommendation. In the boat. Uh, well, we were about to go into the boat, but the question makes it look like that coffee's right. Yeah, we'll go into the boat, and um, as this is Council of Nations, albeit is somewhat distracted. Sorry. Um, I think what I've kind of made my plan before, and I'm sure Paul wants to watch it, how we make it up to the train hard, probably especially the evidence. Yes. Sorry, but I mean, the officers. They, they are, they, you know, they're, they're using information to give it there. That's according to this, it's not strict to the to the government sort of time. So I have been in a sense that I've been doing this further. So, so just to get through this issue. Okay, so yeah. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I mean last time uh, in November when we looked at this, it was a balanced decision and we looked looked at the map at the time and thought not a problem and the year at the time. Not a problem, but all the googly letters. And to be fair, if we two things well, opposing letters, it, this has, has been already deferred, or it's all clock direction, so it's been a long time coming, and that we ought to give a decision as soon as we possibly can. Um, and the easiest thing would be simply to make one decision or other, uh, or if we refuse it, we can go to appeal. But I, I think that we do deserve. Applicant does deserve a proper consideration of this. Quite right that the officer is approaching and said captured the information from the supposed statutory uh, consultee has come back uh, with something different and said it's bloody. Everybody who's I've spoken to, in fact, we spoke before the meeting, uh, Chairman, Senator, everywhere around it, right? but that's a gut instinct. That is not what we can work with. But we've been given good evidence from another authorised site that supports our original decision and, and it contradicts, well, like a lot of people do, contradicts the EA. And I would support it further so that we can actually get proper handle on the reason, the reason for the balanced decision last time was the fact that it didn't work. Now we've been told that possibly it does. But uh, I, I think. The applicant deserves our full attention as the full facts, not not vote blindly on the, on something that we're not really very happy about. So I would I would second. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Councillor Thackeray. Yes, just one one other point, and I can't recite it verbatim, but the EA um, explanation through justification of the Plugris map of planning clearly. Describes its origin, and that is a computer model. It is not property or site specific, and is, as I know, uh, wildly inaccurate. The new map is almost to the meter accurate. I know my village inside out. I know exactly where surface water flooding has occurred, does occur, and the new map is. Absolutely a satellite snapshot of that. So I don't think the new one could be all what's rubbish. I said it is. Thank you. Thank you. Have a cancellation? Just quickly, and um, you know, I think I do think the intervention was a bit late. Right. Right. Could they be giving this information? But I mean, I'm looking at the surface water uh, now, and the, the, it clearly is being impacted. So clearly. I mean, in fact, by a river, to have exactly where the world of the world is. It says that to the point where it crosses the road and uh, ditches, and then it's a spot in the air. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Right, well, just uh, my two planners. Uh, I was deeply uncomfortable with this one, right from the start of looking at it. Uh, not least because uh, the FRA progress assessment was. Uh, stated to be deficient by the Environment Agency, and yet that was based on the fact that the Environment Agency hadn't produced the data 
that they could uh, actually make that sort of, sort of strange circular argument. And uh, I have been known not to be too impressed with uh, environment agency maps in the past. I know for a fact that there are flood maps that say it floods where it doesn't, and say it doesn't, and it does. Uh, so uh, it has been moved for deferral, and I have to say that I, I was going to have great difficulty deciding which way to go on this, other than the fact that there was a perfectly valid reason for refusal, but based on very dodgy sounding data. So uh, I personally would be supporting this. So we've had it moved to the for deferral, and with apologies to Rachel for the number of times this one's been around the call back, we'll go to the vote. That is past unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, we will move on to item nine, which is 22 bleak 010573, Flaxton Grange, Mock Road, Flaxton. Uh, thank you, Miss Alex. Oh, you yeah, are, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair. <laughs> yes, the application was heard at the last meeting between all the established and status and the public and the space payments. Required by a section 106 legal agreement associated with the site planning commission. The third schedule of the legal agreement requires an off site public open space payment of £28,500 for the occupation of more than six of the dwellings on site. This threshold was recently reached following the sale and subsequent occupation of several of the properties with the local occupancy restriction in place. As confirmed by the late pages, the public open space in each facility has been paid to the council and there is no requirement for a deed of verification. As detailed in the earlier report, officers of the staff provided the market and exercise of the applicant to some committee and that the local occupants of conditions associated with the properties and subjects of the application can be removed. The recommendations Members remains one of approval subject to the conditions as, as listed in the third report. Uh, I'll just run through a number of slides and all the same slides from the December meeting. First of all, we've got the application site highlighted to the west of the A64. So, a collection of uh, 13 cottages. So, now I've just got a close up. So, this highlights the five cottages. Uh, the subject of the application. So these have all been marked at a price that reflects the uh, imposition of the local occupancy restriction. And the next slide will just run through the various cottages. So, cottage number three, cottage number eight, cottage number 12, and 14. That's the final slide. So it might just be worth going back to the end of the if that's what we went through. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Chair. All right. Uh, any questions for the other side? Yes, Councillor Andrews. Just a matter of confirmation, Chair. Uh, are we now in a situation in the, in the where we've got eight, uh, eight properties which are subject to the things on each condition? Five. Uh, which you would like to back in the course of the building package. That is correct, yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, 
Actually, I've got a question. Uh, really thanks to Councillor Goodrick for her uh, uh, memory, actually getting 28,500 out of this for uh, the S16 agreement, but uh, already asked this one, but do we know exactly what is going to happen to this 28,500k on the basis that it's an S16 agreement? Deputy Chair, unfortunately, we don't know exactly. Uh, we feel the legal agreement in the fall schedule does require the sum that go, the sum goes towards the provision of public open space within the vicinity of the site. So that's all that's, that's confirmed in the formal type of documents. Right, thank you. I'd like to think that in the vicinity of things, things at the very least within the, the ward, or in general, in the vicinity of the not disappearing into a somewhat black hole. Yeah, I can't uh, just follow up to that. So this money will be staying within that water and being part of vesting rather than space. So we have some clarity and that section where it should be put somewhere in the condition that it has to stay within the water. Um, I don't know whether we can insist it stays in the book that the section was its agreement says what it says. Yeah. Um, the, the, it would be um, uh, it would be a significant risk to the new authority um, to spend a uh, section one six for the anywhere else. I think that the best thing that the the, the, the developers quite easily have to put money back to get it in 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 sort of very good enough. Well, I'll just look at the follow up and then Speaker on this item, which is the agent, Mr. Carl Stott. You've got three minutes, uh, and you need to press the button for Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak this evening on behalf of uh, my client, Yonkin. My name is Carl Stott, and I'm the director of 1947 Charlie Tower Transit Science. As explained in your office report, this application seeks to vary condition two of the 2015 plan commission such that five of 13 dwellings within the site would no longer be the, the subject of a local needs occupancy condition. The obligation is secured by the league agreement of 2015 commission having since been discharged. The application follows comprehensive discussions with your officers that date back to April 2019, which subsequently also involved input from samples in their then capacity as the council's appointed property consultant. Pre application discussions resulted in agreement over the scope and format of the scheme of marketing, including in terms of the prices each of the individual properties would be marketed at in order to reflect the occupancy condition. This generally involving a 20% discount from the comparable open market transactions. Following this, the agreed marketing began in December 2020 and until March 2022, significantly in excess of the nine months agreed with officers. During the marketing period, a total of eight properties were sold to parties that satisfied the occupancy condition. Whilst the other five properties initially attracted a good level of interest, much of this was from parties which did not ultimately meet the occupancy condition or which subsequently decided the properties were just not there. Their isolated location in the countryside being commonly cited as a decisive factor in that. The agreed scheme of marketing has therefore resulted in the sale of over 60% of what were vacant properties to parties that do meet the local needs occupancy condition and at value significantly below the open market value. However, the marketing has also demonstrated across an extended period that the demand for local needs occupancy housing in this location has now been met, with five of the properties not being sold with the occupancy condition remaining in place. In conclusion, this section 73 application is supported by comprehensive and robust evidence to justify the variation of the occupancy condition, such that it can be lifted in respect of those five properties, allowing them to be sold and occupied as open market dwellings. The application therefore accords with policy SG, sorry, policy SB21G of the adopted development plan with regards to lifting occupancy conditions, and it's respectfully requested that the result of our planning commission. This evening, in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you. All right, 
when you go through it to the right, uh, I've got a lot of time to hear about the Council of Clary. Yeah, I, I guess it's quite right. The um, local member is not present, but I live fairly close, but it's in the neighbouring ward. Um, the agent is actually uh, pretty much what I was going to say in terms of following the uh, policies that we, we have. The reason that it's back to us was uh, it was going to be passed, uh, but for the uh, intervention, quite correctly, that we wanted to know a little bit more about where the money is gone, where it is, and if it, it has been paid. It has been paid, and it is sitting with the council, uh, for it's up to the council to deal with it properly, uh, and therefore I would move approval as recommended because I think the applicant has done everything that they can and should have done. Uh, and I'll leave the that. I'll move through. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor Brisky. Right. Councillor Andrews. I'm totally confused, Chair. Um, I, 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 I can't. I, 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 I just can't. I mean, I don't like the level of stuff. I'm not interested in the advice. I'm interested in the advice for everybody. Um, and uh, I, I, I personally think to um, have a comparison of 13,000 on 13,000 is an age of condition that has been five and five dollars. I believe it's a high release of condition eight dollars. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to me. There's no way it's Right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Councillor Bagger. My favourite subject for one of the leagues, I'll give it some condition. For any brief, just to quote the conclusion of the Office of the Local Planning Authority, does not want to prevent the ability of the dwellings to be occupied here. here. I think we uh, discovered during our uh, investigation into the local things occupancy as part of the local plant working party that there have been, I don't quote me, uh, excuse me, being wrong. I agree. 160 approvals, something like 60 uh, approvals for property with low need of condition, somewhere in the region of 60 actual availabilities. And that's since 2013, which kind of points to the fact that it's a rubbish policy and should never have been, and it has been used merely to control and curtail and stymie. Development in this model, which is it's a disgraceful policy in my opinion. It's it's a, a controlling policy um, worthy of the Eastern Bloc. And this application is justified due to the simple reason that the condition was rubbish when it was started, and it's rubbish now, and it wants to be got rid of again. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, normally. Uh, would support the policy of this council when the vote needs occupancy will concern. I think this is a relatively remote location on its Thursday properties, so it's quite plausible that the market for the local people was exhausted. So uh, I don't think it's unreasonable to remove from major burning boxes. So we have a proposal, a mover and a second for approval before we go to the vote. Six votes for and one against. So that is passed. <clears throat> right, that brings us on to again item 10. 22 week 0 we got lost, Gary. <laughs> Don't seem to miss this. They're actually blocking two timber stables on the back side, separating two. So, yeah, uh, one line probably in the disguise of the other one. It's a new boy. Right. <laughs> 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 
second uh, we don't have any speakers on this one. Uh, um, there is an update uh, which relates to what I paid for page 40, which is the flat show, it's not flat show, the actual location of the state has been the principal uh, matter for discussion of the quality of some of the comments that we would see. Uh, the state itself. We're seeing from the report is relatively modest description of the entry to answer the description of the qualification of the site of the mine. From the east side, it's about two metres. Same thing to the roof of the So, attention to the scale of the building in the landscape. Um, there are no other agency reports. I think probably the public just went straight to the first one. So, you can see this is the first one I've taken. Snowy day. Uh, but what uh, this shows you the entrance to the eastern side of the site from Church Lane. Uh, Church Lane is very uh, back lane at this point, very rural. And as you can see from the Church Lane, you've got a substantial hedgerow all the way along Church Lane until you reach the gateway and it's put the chassis service the entrance to the properties, which are some distance away, uh, facing down to 72 back. Just go from the next. This is just standing a little bit near to the entrance. As you can see in the distance, you've got the profile of the views of the building, the main part of the village. The stable would be behind the section of the hedgerow that you see on the right hand side of that picture, quite close to the hedgerow. Um, and in that sense, it's sort of quite discreetly located uh, at that point, near the point of where you've got the, the hedgerow, which is quite well screened. This is from within the site, looking back towards the edge which is just on the uh, right hand side there. The stable can sit in that corner, it's part of the site. In the distance, you can see the profile of buildings, uh, some of the buildings you can shed uh, campus at the time. So, although it's uh, set back behind the rear to the main properties themselves, as you can see in the distance, there are scattering around uh, some of the Sheds uh, further along this part of Church Lane. In the distance, you can see the hedgerow carried the way along. So, uh, from Church Lane, you don't really have to view into this part of the village. Uh, next one. I think this might be uh, just the view back the other way. So, this is the view back towards uh, Great Stone, so the orange rear going further along beyond there. So, again, you get a speed of how high the boundary hedgerow is across the Church Lane. I think that might be the last photograph. Oh no, this is the photograph. So you can not in the time of snow, looking down the track uh, towards the back of number 36. Back of number 36 is going uh, extensive renovation at the moment. So, um, this is going to be three. Uh, yeah. Number 36 uh, is, the, is the principal building that you see before you there. Um, and from number 36, the the, the, uh, the stable is around about 70 meters. So you can set some distance at the back of the lot of the thing. The habits were there, lab dwelling and the neighboring dwellings. And you'll notice from page uh, two of three that these two dwellings are themselves set back a little bit from the centric to the left frontage. Uh, the nearest property immediately to the north is about 80 meters away. So I think that's part of the consideration to think of where we do our Domestic tables statements will be occupied to number 36. Um, and the applicant's view is the incredible tidy. Stables located in this location, both from the landscape of the background, but also from the neighbor's house. Um, with that in mind, uh, Chairman, I've already had a little update. This report will be to recommend the proof. Right, thank you, Gary. Any questions on this one? No? Okay. Is that a question? Well, the question would be just a general one, really. Why, why does it need planning commission? Because it's actually no committee development advice for it in this location. So it's just one of those things that the NGOs have been covering. I mean, because it's got a double building and buy that with that. Uh, I'm not worried well, about it. Well, I suspect some people do, Councillor Sackery, but it's. Uh, not all with permission, but the intent is to be behind the mission. It's not a destination. Uh, 
how it's a result of development. This is the front elevation. And as you can see, this is three C, which is predominantly uh, terraced houses of about uh, about four dwellings. Uh, this shows down the side of the first floor uh, PC Hill, where uh, the current has an access and garage. And this is the access track, which wraps around the building and actually provides the access for its neighbour, number 32, to uh, access uh, the street from the rear of their property, uh, giving uh, 34 PC Hill very little privacy. And you can also see there how uh, the garden 32 spreads across the rear of another 34. Uh, and the, what well, you can see, the remaining rear garden, the yeah, garden 34 PCL, PCL is in the foreground. This is a pet shot again showing the, showing the application site. These are currently some albums on the site which are little used by. Uh, I think it yeah, well, a former applicant. Uh, it's a rental property uh, by the applicant who's currently vacant. Again, this, this is uh, the garden 32 PZ and all. The uh, houses to the rear, as most, most can see, there's Quite a high conifer edging, which is like to prevent any part overlooking. And this is the first side seen from the recreational grid. And as, as you can see from this side there, it would be seen closely grouped with the, the existing dwellings. Uh, and it will basically just appear as another dwelling within the site. Um, with regard to with regards to the issues before members, as this is an outline application with all matters reserved, uh, the issue principally before us today is whether the principle of the developing site for a house is acceptable. Uh, the site is within the development boundary of Malton, where the principle of developing land for housing is in accordance with the local plan. And for the reasons set out in my report, the proposal is considered to be compatible with the residential character of the area and the immunity of neighbouring development. As such, the proposal is considered in accordance with the local plan and is recommended for approval. Any questions? Seeing no hands, I have no speakers on this one, so we will go to Councillor Andrews to support the member. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, I think those questions uh, are very useful. Uh, when I was looking at the past, I got these questions. I think the department of PCA address. So, um, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I've got nothing to go to the officer's report, Chair. Um, I've got no, no, no questions. Um, no comments on this case, except just that. Uh, that was it straight away. Thank you. Do we have a second or anybody wishes to speak, Councillor? Uh, it's another one uh, application. I don't see how we can look. We've got nothing to push against at all. I'm very happy to say, Councillor Andrews, uh, motion. Thank you. Anybody else? No. In that case, we move to the second move. No more to Two is unanimous. Yeah, so we will move on to item 12. 22 of the single deal 7964. The site three shepherd books. All the right conversion of Craig Lane to Carol and the system. So this proposal sits on a question of the site of the 
six months, which for reason purposes, and get storage in the bank in a month of months to get the answer. The application site relates to domestic property type of price, which is located at the eastern side of Grand Union Cove Hotel in Hobbit Land, a joint in Fox Avenue to its domestic experience to be part of the plot. The book will be able to get this is one or two aerial maps, so it's just a more sort of simpler version of the highlighted in orange. On this map, I would just point out the public right of way uh, that's in proximity to the site. Uh, it's approximately 90 meters away at the nearest point. This is just a more zoomed in version. This map actually we quite clearly plots the village development limits, and you can appreciate that the dwelling and part of the asset privilege actually falls within the development limits. But as was clarified on page 41 of the late pages, part of the garden as well as the paddock plant actually falls outside these limits, and that's just a lot of designated as the wider of the three sides under the local plan strategy. And then just for clarification, that means that the three shepherd stops. Are all proposed for site of all land outside the village development limits. However, the most blessed for the limits, which we just see with the orange arrow, is actually still within the domestic privilege of the property. Um, the site is adjoined to the east by agricultural land and separate ownership. To the north, it's adjoined by the Hallett Plant and all domestic buildings in the ownership of the heights. And also by the residential property of Rock Quid. Uh, to the south, the site is joined by Spring Hill Apartments and it's kind of smooth over here. Um, the site is accessed via a shared access taken by a Craig way into the north, and that also serves the properties of the heights of Rock Wood. It's been confirmed by the editor that this area falls under the ownership of the applicants, and it's the other properties that benefit from the right of way across this. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to just have a look at that area and just all uh, the different aspects. Um, just moving on to the photographs. This first one is looking directly at the access, which is plainly in the tent of the property again. And the property in the background would be the heights. Uh, this is just another view of this but we're going to more south towards the rest of the village. And then also the computers. And you're able to appreciate the good visibility that there is at this point of the Prairie. Um, this one is actually connected from within Craig Lane. Um, and just at the very far end of this photograph, you see the access to the application site itself. In the foreground, um, we have heights and the lock through to just get into them. Um, so, this is just a better view of the bigger access to the lock through. Um, so it's another view tech for one frame for the end. So you see in the midst of the properties to the right hand side of the photograph, and then to the left hand side of the photograph is the paddock within, or sorry, paddock pass under the ownership of the heights. And that's just another view of that to the land and to the direction. Um, so now we are within the domestic privilege of the application site, and you can appreciate just the dwelling and this patch garage at that point. The garage itself provides one off street parking space. Um, a part of this space is being used temporarily and extended with accommodation for one of the applicant's parents. Um, it's been advised that this is temporary and it's not confirmed that it presents severe material change of use. Um, so this is set in more of the rear of the property. Um, again, we're looking at the detached garage building. Um, but at this point, you're also able to see sort of extent of the existing parking area. Um, this parking area has been changed. There is capacity for this to accommodate all vehicles associated with transit property, but also the three shepherd spots. And I thought I'd just point this like this is the location of the um, where one of the shepherd's house would be located where the cars and horse walks is. Um, so this is, as I described before, inside the domestic privilege of the property, but 
actually like get both my sides about the winners. Um, but I think it's a page of support. She has all time she made her not being material. Um, so issue makes consensus in terms of policy compliance. Um, but you have to be at this point a very mature politician. And the line is that I don't think there'll be any public views so on this contain large numbers of and this is just an overview of the gap configuration scale of the experiment from start to this point. So now we are actually moving the pilot plan back to what's worst for the domestic or original form of paper. Um, and where we see this is the problem here, I'm also not sure about that, but for the worst things that I think I'm also just to show you. Um, so the side of things, the patch for is increasing the study. Um, and then this is looking towards the southeastern corner of the planet where one of the shepherds has to be. And then the second is the final shepherd's hut that we have in the right corner of the field, just at this point in London, the biggest is the one of them. So you do get the sense that it will be quite well for it to be the biggest at this point. Um, so this is looking again to where the state of the shepherd's club to the prisoner and then at this point I think it's the photographs of the public right of way. Um, and at this point we're just getting the best of the group to make sure of the building. But these photographs are just kind of up ahead of my folks towards uh, the main street. <laughs> and I think these are about two sides, just at the west of the of the street of the studio building. Um, so I think there is that very strong visual version at this point. Um, in terms of the principal development, um, in terms of new shepherd's huts located outside of village development limits, um, the policy has to be at the moment is that a key contributor to Rhino's role of community is Jermison. And it notes that in the wider of the countryside, you will be found with more able support and principal to follow in. And it quotes, new touring caravan and camping sites, a stock type caravan, and shall I sell key from a convention that can be accommodated without. An unacceptable visual intrusion and So, in terms of principal policy, I have to be able 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 to be to be able to be able to be to be able to be able to be able to be able um, there is a further condition to tie these these polar units to the medium dwelling land of regular house. Um, and that will really ensure that appropriate amenities can be secure and differentiated. Um, in terms of the character of form and impact on the area of high landscape value, um, the precise scale of form is checked as well as possible in the land of the course will be convenient. But they are modest in scale of each and such to be for a long time. Their design, the amount of the shepherd's class reflecting the cultural setting, and it would be constructed with natural timber board. And there's no outdoor light in the woods as part of the escape, which was secured on commission. Um, if light is proposed to some point in the future, we need more details of that when the is installed. Um, so it's considered that the two units in the Mahara Connect, which we closely refer to as the synthesis test of the in be like a two-year halfway progress or rich of the domestic condition of the product. Um, also there's a landscape that we might have been proposed for the least point of the site, double passing the of it's also considered that the critical unit of the domestic privilege is very sensitive to this like large business edge. Um, and it's in the view of how it dreams as a bit. Um, the continued use of the existing gravel car park area is beneficial in line with the terms rather than it being a manifest or hard stamped. 
Um, so therefore, it's considered to be a second in terms of parking for the areas in the last year following. In terms of neighboring communities, it's not considered that the community has resulted in any material harm to the amount of neighboring residents. Um, as I said, the need to accommodate up to two persons, so consequently, it would be likely to be occupied by families. Um, the two units face to have significant distance from domestic current relations of other properties that within 30 meters. Um, it is acknowledged that the second unit, which is in the domestic current relation, it is a closer proximity to the residential property of Rockwood at a distance of five and a half meters, but it's not mature by the great connection between these areas. And also, it being equally close to the tobacco pits dwelling really means just that effective on the self management presence. Um, and it would be the loss of privacy in the mirror. Um, concern has been raised about the use of the applicants for the public property, and which falls under the applicant of the, or sorry, it falls under the ownership of the applicants. Um, when the units are occupied, unfortunately, the journeys for each day increase, but it's not considered that these progress are materially harmful level, and it would be outside the domestic or relation of the properties. The access from it appears to be in good condition and due to the nature of the day. It's not considered that the vehicles would be likely to travel at this stage. The edge has also confirmed that the applicant is agreeable to a condition to seek further details of warning signs so that it should be played to advise an option. Um, and the prices of our mobile health team would have reviewed the staff attention. They were made aware of specifically the objection to the themselves and no objection. Um, there is no objection from the Home Culture and Technical Highway team, and there was no objection if their revised uh, reading consultation response. Um, therefore, the recommendation is not questions. The right, we have two speakers on this item. The first is the objector, this is Rachel Smith. I think you're not a good team guy. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a warning. Good evening, Chair and everybody, and thanks for letting me to come to speak this evening. Um, I would like to say that I encourage tourism. This is a beautiful area. I have no objection with encouraging tourism. However, as the field policy states, it has to be on an appropriate scale, and I don't believe this scheme is an appropriate scale. I would like to argue tonight for a reduction in the number of checks that's that go on the site. There are two reasons for this. The first one is road safety, and the second one is noise, which hasn't actually been mentioned in any of the uh, preamble so so first of all, to road safety, it's a single track road. Um, the owner provides no passing places on this road. Um, you either have to reverse out to um, down, down the hill onto a main road, which would be a good idea, or reopen the gate into the um, neighbor's property, which is controlled electronically. It's an area of roughly uh, 90 meters, and it bisects our land. So we've got fields on the side of the road and our House and grounds is the other side. Um, the roads don't sit three houses, as we've um, uh, just heard. We've got two children who, um, as good parents, we um, encourage to get off their consoles and out into the fresh air. They enjoy their ball games and they often play between the field and the uh, and our garden, the other side of the road. Um, Worry a parent should not have is how their children play within their own grounds, and this would definitely be a worry for us as parents. Um, I would also like to um, to say that it wasn't considered that there'd be a lot of traffic. We are actually doubling the number of families using the road. There will be three cars coming from the shepherd huts. There are three families using the um, the road. So you're actually doubling the number of families using the road. Which is unacceptable. Um, I would also um, put the, the, uh, the lady said that you have good access um, out onto the main road. This is an area of a real speed problem. Um, cars do not slow down to be more than 80 percent of the So I don't think a proper risk assessment has been conducted, but I would like to defer so that can take place. Um, 
The other thing is we um, our driveway, as I my um, attorney based, and I think it would cause more cars to reverse around our drive, so we may have to remove that part of it. We also have an equal share with the owner to pay for the maintenance of the road. That's something that hasn't been mentioned tonight. And we would have to be responsible for the maintenance of the road, so we would put our own money in, although the owners of the road are using it more with their business. I'd like to go on to noise disturbance. I know I'm running out of time, but it's outdoor living, lots of barbecues, lots of dogs, lots of camping. Can you assure me that a, a proper um, noise assessment has been conducted? If it hasn't, because there's been no mention of noise yet this evening, please can we have a noise assessment conducted, followed by a noise management plan after that? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, we now have the agent, Casey Atkinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, councillors. My clients have proposed three one bed shepherd's huts within their property's curtilage and held home. The site access is by a private lane entirely within my client's ownership, but two properties do have a right over this lane. The topography and curvature of this short lane is such that any visitor to the site would have to drive slowly to both access or egress the site. Large electric gates also mean any visitor would be driving slowly to stop, enter a code, and then access the site. Sufficient vehicle parking exists within the site to ensure all residents of the property and potentially an additional three vehicles at any one time visiting the units could easily be parked and maneuvered safely without the need for off site parking or reversing down the drive and um, the access lane. As such, there have been no objections from the high risk department or indeed any statutory consultee, including the town council or your own officers in any internal department relating to this or any other part of the proposal. The huts are all to be of a typical timber construction with no additional external lighting or of one bedroom, thus meaning it's highly unlikely that children or your families will visit the site. Therefore, noise is not considered an issue. Two of the units are to be positioned within, but to the rear of the applicant's curtilage, immediately adjacent to an existing stable block. It's notable that a neighbour's agricultural building would help shield the unit from view, as it's wider than the proposed unit and the stable combined. The site is bounded by a wooden fence, which the applicant has agreed with your tree and landscape officer to replace with a species rich named Pedro, which will soften the appearance of the two wooden units. Indeed, the whole site is bordered by such hedging and fencing, meaning the timber units will not be incongruous in this position. The remaining unit will be positioned on the applicant's card standing, hidden from view, stuck behind the high hedge. An elevated unit with parking beneath was proposed here. However, on receiving objections and in discussion with the case officer, an amended proposal ensures absolute screening of this unit, thus all of the same design. The applicant's house is within the settlement limit. However, the existing garage, paddock and stable are, as the case officer said, outside this limit within the countryside and area of high landscape value. As it is, this is the case with several properties in this location. However, as stated, the units sit comfortably with the curtilage of this property and adjacent to all manner of outbuildings, therefore will not impact this edge of settlement location. As stated by the case officer, there is policy support within the adopted plan for this type of low scale tourist accommodation in this location. It's my view that this proposal seeks to protect the wider countryside within the highly valued landscape by seeking to locate the two units within the applicant's curtilage adjacent to existing buildings. Therefore, we are respectfully ask you to approve the proposal in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. We will move into debate. So, somebody wants to kick off? Oh, we have questions. Oh, I'll ask Just an observation, really. Um, neighboring the uh, application site is a stable block, which um, Council sought to uh, refuse conditions for 
the board there to say what's out of it. I can't see much difference in terms of disturbance to the needs of the others. Uh, but I did proposal. I wonder if the stable block and its um, and the paddock would, would also be capable of making a um, for the tourism destination for for uh, Shepherd's Hills future. It's equally outside of the development. Unfortunately, that's not the plan. It's impossible to decide and see. Anybody else wishes to speak? Yes, Cass and Mackenzie. Thank you, Jasmine. This is a very small uh, development, three months housing two people. Uh, having looked at this, thought about it. I can't see it causing any great disturbance to anybody. And um, I'm happy to go along with the officer's recommendation and recommend approval. Thank you. Do you have a second? Yeah, you can put my unit out in the Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? No. Right. We moved and seconded for approval, so we will go to the box. Six votes for and one against. So that is passed. We will move to item 13. Oh, sorry, no, it was an abstention. Yeah, six four of our abstention. Item number 13, 22, complete 0, 1, 0, 1, 6, the house, and this is for the demolition of a garage and the erection of a single story extension at the Global Beacon Park, Pickering. And this is Bill Thompson. Originally sought permission for a large two story park by the park here extension. And the applicant has been revised and reduced the proposal following concerns raised by the officer of the The site is currently attached to one located on the Beacon Park West Side of Pickering. The application has been brought to the committee following two objections to the occupied neighbouring properties, including one for the occupiers of the trial, which is the immediate neighbouring property to the south. Um, the concerns have been raised related to the scale of the extension and the potential of the extension. The extension is meant to be an extension in two parts. The majority of the rear section of the extension is the front term and it's got to be that roof for long version of the The overall height of the extension consists of rear section.
Okay, right. Uh, two speakers, first being the objectives, the Gary Watson, Gary Watson, the 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 Gary
Australia was sheriff site in relation to the one in context of California. The yellow lines in the center indicates conservation area boundary over into the west part of the conservation area, and the African side that's out on the front to the southeast of the division. This next area will share the site in relation to the two objects. It's Mountain Station Rugby Pumps to the east, 24 Ashdale Road to the north. Yeah, and this further area shows the position of the dwelling within its plot in relation to the property to the east. Dwelling is set back to the top wall of the neighboring property by around 2.4 meters. Yeah, and the yellow boxes indicate the outbuildings within the garden of the neighboring property. Building in the northeast corner of the site is an open plan using a frame structure called the Pillar Seaster. Building to the left of that is the rear house, and then the building on the western boundary is a brick house structure. This next photo is the current elevation of the dollar taken from the entrance to the site, and this photo also shows the relationship of the dollar with the promise to the east. And this is taken in the northeastern corner of the application site, which is towards the rear elevation of the property. Members should also be able to see on the left of the photo the existing brick built outbuilding in the neighbor's garden. This is taken on the western side of the garden facing east further show the relationship of the application site with the local property. Now this is taken from the rear of the existing dollar moving towards the rear boundary of the rear 24 arch This is taken within the rear garden of 19 station road moving towards the rear of the application site. And the next two photos are taken from Ashdale Road, so the application site is the third property in the line. And then it is, uh, this is taken from Station Brown looking towards the application site, which is the property within the center of the image, with 19 Station Brown looking to the front of the map, which should further show the relationship between the two. And the next two photos are taken from Station Brown to the east towards the application site. <coughs> Should have seen proper planning pages which includes 3D visual extension and no update to be able to support the recommendations of the book. Okay. Well, first up is the objects of this country, Griffin. Thank you. Um, so I live at the Damon Gotti at the station road with my wife Maria. We're objecting, but we're not going to need to take no objection to our other members extension last year. We're just concerned about this application consequence to our home. Planet Department has identified that 17 of our property not designated heritage assets. Indeed, Gumsley as a traditional historic character. We accept that modern and old can complement each other, but where this is successful, the new must be subservient to the old. This extension clearly masks the building, changes its character, dominating it, and it is not subservient or complementary. Dominating character is something we expect to see in Leeds, not energy. It's too early. I cannot speak for all wider. But it doesn't seem to be to respect Elmsley's specific design policy. There are no examples of timber cladding anywhere on station or Ashdale Road. This relic, this extension, also be visible to Ashdale Road will stick out like a sore thumb. In Helmsley, examples of traditional meets of modern, the modern is always subservient, for example, Panetta's clothes shop. The officer's report mentions that our garden is modest and all facing with an outdoor that has taken up space, arguing there is already an impact on the light of April, so suggesting that where compromise exists, a third compromise should be acceptable. As a heritage asset, government guidance is very clear regarding the cumulative impact of development. Past harmful development is not justification for further harmful development. Multiple small changes can have a big impact. 
by a different point. The outbuilding mentioned is likely built there so it's not to waste the precious light in our garden, as that area gets this light, this of this sun. This extension would be very close to our boundary within uh, a foot or thereabouts. The highest points of the building cast it along the shadow. Though the extension the rear wall extends 3.3 meters, because of the roof design, the high points of the building would extend out to approximately 7 meters. Parts of our garden are here, so greenhouse and seater is only 12 meters long. An extra 7 meters of shadow gives you an idea how much we will be impacted. Shadow analysis only assesses until 3 p.m. Doesn't include the winter months. By even summer sun, all our winter sun will be gone. We cannot understand particular gardens, how this could be considered to be acceptable. Our concerns are also reflected in the comments of the parish council. They probably did not respond to the limited revisions to the application because they came in over Christmas and there was no attempt to address the council's concerns. Their original concerns remain valid. When making planning decisions on non designated, Heritage assets, um, a balanced judgment must be made. We accept our property is not held to be castle. But what is the balance against the overbearing and oppressive impact? Third bathroom, dressing room, nothing else. Surely, sorry. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, surely, negative should be weighed against the benefits of the community, economy, and our environment. There are no identified planning benefits in the officer's report, but there is an acknowledgement of the negative impact on our immunity. So, where is the balance? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Then we now have the applicant, Mr. Max Mosby Brown. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much for the time. Um, to welcome the opportunity to support our application. I'm Max Coffey Brown, I'm the owner of the property at 17 Station Road. Um, we bought the house in July of uh, last year and developed 